This is a big, big, big topic. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's video is sponsored by Built Bar. And in part two of this two-part series, I'm gonna be talking about the best foods and supplements for bloating. But first, let me tell you about my sponsor, Built Bar. So if you are a snack queen or king like me, you've got to try these bars. I mean, I've got a whole pantry full of different snacks in my house, but I always keep these in like every purse and bag and drawer. There are built bars everywhere for when that snack attack hits. And you know what I always say, unless you stole it from a baby, all foods are zero guilt. But I love these because they actually taste like chocolate bars rather than like a chalky protein bar because they're made with real chocolate and they're packed with protein, which we love. So this is my favorite, my favorite, my favorite and i am ready for it if you know you know the cookie dough chunk mm, she good get at me there are like little bundles of cookie dough joy it is such a pleasure mm. Mm. she is good I might have chalk on my face, but that is a hazard of the job. Now these are a low in sugar bar. So when I feel like I need like a really solid, complete snack for post-workout, this chopped up on some oatmeal or like with some berries and yogurt, she's good. Or you can mix it into ice cream for like a little bedtime dessert. That is happening. That is happening tonight. So if you'll want to try these guys out yourself, check out the link in my description and use my promo code ABBYSHARP15 to get 15% off of your order. And you can pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with current or previous experiences with disordered eating. As always, feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. And if you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, ring that little bell so that you never miss out, and follow me over on TikTok and Instagram at at Abby's Kitchen. Okay, so if you missed part one, I went over the major causes of bloating. So if you haven't watched that, get on it, then come back here. Now we're going to be talking about what to do with it. But of course, a big reminder, first of all, that the cure will ultimately depend on the cause. So it's worth noting that, you know, beneficial food or supplement for somebody that has bloating from constipation could potentially cause bloating for somebody with SIBO and vice versa. Now, in some cases, the solution is as simple as removing or limiting a food, as in the case of like a food intolerance. But the thing about functional digestive nutrition is that there's rarely a black and white straight solution. It's a lot of trial and error, and it might take a cocktail of supplements, foods, or lifestyle changes to really get relief for you. Now, it's also worth mentioning that a lot of remedies out there are not super well researched. So I always recommend working with your dietitian and doctor to find a solution that's unique to you. I myself consulted with not one, but four of my GIRD colleagues on this video just to really get their clinical insight. So a big thank you again to Dasha Agulnik, Amber Gourley, Caitlin Self, and Lacey Dunn for all of your help. As always, I'm leaving some links to their practices below for you guys to check them out. With that said, let's talk about foods to beat the bloat. Food number one, as I mentioned in part one, one of the reasons for bloating can be poor digestive outputs, including having the right digestive enzymes needed to break down food. We see a ton of digestive enzyme supplements on the market, which I'm gonna speak to more in a minute, but there are also a lot of foods that naturally contain digestive enzymes to help break down food into nutrients that your body can then absorb. For example, papaya contains the enzyme papain, pineapple contains bromelain, and kiwi contains actinidin, all of which work to break down protein into amino acids. Now, kiwi specifically is my anti-bloating queen, as research suggests that while prunes, psyllium, and kiwi all help to reduce constipation, only the mighty kiwi helped to reduce bloating symptoms. And it only took two kiwis a day. Hail kiwi. 
Now, number two is ginger. So we love ginger. Ginger has prokinetic properties that helps to stimulate stomach emptying and digestive motility. And it also contains the proteolytic enzyme zingabane. So it's kind of like a double threat. Now, I want to note that the research on ginger has largely been done on concentrated ginger capsules. So you would likely need to consume a fair bit of fresh ginger to see the same clinical impact. But if you enjoy ginger, and I love ginger, I really don't see the harm in incorporating it regularly into your daily diet. Now, food number three is peppermint. Peppermint is my personal favorite, and it's something that I actually use whenever I feel particularly bloated after a high FODMAP meal because it's an anti-spasmodic that helps to soothe and calm the GI tract. Now, concentrated peppermint oil in particular has been shown to help treat digestive symptoms like bloating and abdominal cramping. But having said that, it can also exacerbate heartburn. So definitely a big red flag to avoid it if you have GERD. Number four on my list are bitter foods. So pretty much all of the dietitians I spoke to mentioned using bitter foods like arugula, dandelion, grapefruit, etc., for helping with bloating episodes. Bitter foods like bitter supplements may help to stimulate the bitter receptors of the gallbladder, pancreas, and stomach to help naturally increase bile flow, digestive enzymes, and stomach acids. They're also delicious and in season this time of year. So something to consider just working into to your normal routine if you like the flavor of them. Number five are fennel seeds. Now, not only are they a good source of fiber, but fennel seeds have antibacterial, antifungal, and anti-inflammatory properties, which can help to improve the microbiome to reduce fermentation that causes gas. Now, the anti-inflammatory anaphol compound in fennel seeds also may help to relax the intestines to allow for better bowel motility and therefore the release of gas. Finally, number six are my super sprinkles, AKA hemp hearts, chia, and flax. So you guys know we love hemp hearts in my house, and here's another reason why. So these tiny little sprinkles are packed with fiber, but their nutrition is quite concentrated. So they don't add a ton of bulk, but you're still getting a lot of benefits. They're also low FODMAP at typical portions. So they're appropriate even for sensitive tummies. So this one is really hit and miss, and I don't wanna recommend it to the masses as something to specifically focus on if you don't know the root cause of your bloating. So on the one hand, some studies have shown that foods rich in probiotics may be helpful in certain scenarios for reducing bloating and gas, and that things like sauerkraut, miso, kimchi, and kefir contain naturally occurring digestive enzymes like proteases, amylase, and lipase. So for example, one study found that the lactase enzyme found in kefir help to improve lactose digestion in those with lactose intolerance. Having said that, if your bloating is the result of an overgrowth or histamine related, you want to be very cautious about adding bacteria, even if it is good bacteria. So this is where we get into strain specific probiotic recommendations for treatment, which is hard to manipulate when we're talking about a fermented food. Now, moving on, what about the oh so overwhelming world of supplements? So like food, the right supplement for your bloating will strongly depend on the cause. But number one, let's first talk about digestive enzymes. If we're dealing with a food intolerance or a sensitivity to a specific FODMAP food, then the best course of action would be to limit these foods in your diet. And when you can't limit them, to use over-the-counter digestive enzyme supplements like lactate or alpha-galactosidase, aka Bino. Now, these two digestive enzymes are the best supported enzymes in the literature for lactose and alpha-galactosidase intolerances, respectfully. Even still, most folks find that taking a supplement is really just an adjunct therapy to help with tolerance, they don't actually fix the problem. And they also don't usually provide absolute relief. In an ideal world, we would wanna get clients eating as many foods as possible without having symptoms. The best case scenario is to actually address the root problem. So if it's an overgrowth, for example, like SIBO, if we actually can eradicate the SIBO, then there's a good chance we can start eating a lot of these intolerant foods again. As for other digestive enzyme products out there, there are admittedly so many options, most of which have limited evidence to support. That doesn't mean that they don't work, and theoretically, most should work. So for example, 
We do have a study on papaya supplements that have found that it helped to reduce constipation and bloating. And early research suggests that concentrated doses of the bromelain enzyme in pineapple can serve as a digestive aid. It's all very promising, but more human research is definitely needed to confirm these findings and for us to figure out the optimal clinical dose. We also know that folks with pancreatic insufficiency are given prescription grade digestive enzymes like different proteases and amylase and lipase so there is a clinical indication for them. Now, I've spoken to dozens of my colleagues who specialize in this area of practice who have really no skin in the game when it comes to the incentive for suggesting enzymes and other supplements, and they all generally agree that while the research is unfortunately quite behind, their clinical experience suggests that these supplements often can help. So again, it's very important to work with a dietitian to get a reputable third-party tested product and ideally to respond to evidence from something like a GI map or another stool test to determine what enzymes you might actually even need. If you wanna learn more about enzymes and bloating, I wrote a whole blog post on this topic, which I'm going to link below. Next, let's talk about ox bile. So ox bile is often recommended as a supplement for folks who are experiencing severe bloating after consuming fats with the concern that they are not producing enough bile acids to break those fats down. This is a common suggestion specifically with SIBO since one of the purported causes of SIBO is low bile flow, so adding bile in can theoretically help. Unfortunately, like most things in the digestive world, we got mainly animal research to go on, which doesn't mean that it doesn't help, but we just don't have great evidence yet. It's also possible to create bile acid diarrhea if you take too much. So as always, please make sure that you're working with a dietitian to determine if it's even right for you. Next, let's talk about betaine HCL. So low stomach acid can also trigger bloating due to poor digestion and then fermentation of food. However, research suggests that supplements like betaine HCL may help to mediate this by helping to create stomach acid. Like ox bile, it's not without risk if you don't know the root cause for your bloating. So for example, folks with H. pylori may find that betaine HCL can actually cause the H. pylori to go further into the stomach, which ultimately creates a risk of ulceration. So best again to work with your doctor to rule any of those things out. Supplement number four is Iberogast. Now, Iberogast is a tincture made up of ingredients like peppermint, chamomile, licorice root, and lemon balm that has been found to be effective in clinical trials. The research suggests it may help to reduce gas formation, regulate muscle contractions along the digestive tract, and also improve digestive secretions, which can collectively help provide some relief. Anecdotally, this is a favorite of mine, and I personally use it with pretty much every meal. Finally, let's talk about another one of my go-to's fiber supplements. So we talked about constipation or slow motility as being one of the potential causes of bloating, in which case a fiber supplement may help. So partially hydrolyzed guar gum, otherwise known as PHGG or like a sun fiber, is a prebiotic fiber that has been shown to improve symptoms of constipation in individuals with IBS by boosting bowel frequency without excess fermentation. Similarly, psyllium fiber is another great option for improving constipation and digestion and has been shown to help improve symptoms of IBS, including bloating. However, like fiber from food, there's a real goal Goldilocks effect with fiber here. So both too much or too little can exacerbate bloating. So always work with a dietitian before starting a fiber supplement and slowly work your way up in dose. Now I wanna close this section off by talking briefly about probiotic supplements. Like with probiotic foods, the world of probiotic supplements is strain specific and highly individualized, but it can be worth getting it right to help heal the immune system to prevent further pathogenic overgrowth and dysbiosis. When it comes to the general population, two systematic reviews suggested that multi-strain probiotic supplements tend to be more effective at supporting IBS symptoms compared to single strains alone 
alone. So we usually see a combination or combinations of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium strains for more generalized IBS-like symptoms. But depending on the cause of your bloating, S. boulardii or a spore-based probiotic like Megaspore, which is a combination of bacillus strains, may be safer options for folks with bacterial overgrowth conditions. Finally, let's close this video off by talking about lifestyle hacks to reduce bloating, beginning with eating behaviors. How you eat is often just as important as what you eat when it comes to bloating. Focusing on slow chewing, replacing carbonated drinks with regular water, and mindful eating practices can all help to reduce swallowing too much air. Next is vagus nerve stimulation. The vagus nerve is one of the main components of the parasympathetic nervous system, which oversees digestion via the brain-gut axis. Now, we have research to suggest that activities that stimulate this axis like singing, humming, laughing, deep breathing, and gargling with water can all help to improve digestion. We also know that really any activity that is stress reducing to you can help to improve digestion. So I recommend focusing on self-care on those days where you feel particularly uncomfortable. Self-care, self-care, I'm treating me. I love the Nerva app for some really great digestion related meditations. Now, third, we have movement. Now, I know when we have really bad abdominal pain from bloating, the last thing we want to go do is go for like a run on the treadmill. We just want to like curl up in our bed. But research suggests that gentle exercise, like going for a little light walk or doing some yoga poses that target the abdominal area can help to get the bowel moving and release that buildup of gas. And that brings me to my last point, which is massage and pressure. So similar to gentle exercise, abdominal massage can help to relax your stomach muscles and release that trapped gas while also helping to stimulate digestion. So you can gently massage your stomach yourself or even just lay down on your stomach to help move things along. So that was pretty much as simple as I could make it to be. <laughs> if you're following my SIBO saga journey, you know that digestion is anything but simple or clear cut. It is definitely not black and white and there's apparently an expensive product that you can buy to miraculously cure pretty much anything out there. Not to mention the fact that we are so behind on the research just doesn't make getting effective quality care very easy. Unfortunately, the gut is so complex and for most people curing yourself of bloating isn't going to be fast, easy, or painless. So I strongly suggest working with a dietitian who specializes in digestive health to help you navigate this snake oil filled world. And on that note, that is all that I have for you guys today. A big thank you to Built Bar for sponsoring. If you like this video, give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with your thoughts on what you'd like to see me cover next. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.